Welcome to The Sweet Life. I'm Christy Anderson. When we started this program, we wanted it to be real conversations with real leaders in our community. We want to learn about their experiences professionally, but also all of the things that they've learned in their personal life that have gotten them to where they are today. And I'm really excited about today's guest, Candy Jones of Girls Inc. Candy, I've known about you for a while. We've been friends for a while. I adore you. I have so much respect for you. And I'm just so happy that you've decided to spend a few moments with me today. Thank you so much. Feelings mutual. I mean, when you asked, I was ecstatic because spending this time with you is important. I love it. Thank you. Well, good. So you're new to this role at Girls Inc. (laughs) Still drinking from the fire hose a little bit. But for those few people maybe in our community or whoever watches this that don't know about Girls Inc., those few people that are under a rock still, (laughs) what can you tell us about the organization and and what you guys do for girls in our community? Yeah, yeah. So Girls Inc. is an affiliate of a national organization that really focuses on girls between the ages of 5 and 18. Um, Our work is really centered around empowering girls. Our motto is strong, smart, and bold, and that's the direction we want every girl in our community to go. Our location serves predominantly black and brown girls. We have a location in North Omaha. We also have a location in South Omaha and a small facility in Lincoln. So we're busy and we're doing really good work with probably around 800 girls a year. Wow. Yeah. That has really grown. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> That's great. Uh, when you took this job, I mean, was this in this nearly, you know, several months already, I guess yeah. you've been in, in this role, but. Was this something that was always on your radar? Did you always think that, did you ever think that you would become the executive director or be leading a significant nonprofit in our community? Was it kind of something that was always like, that's going to be me someday? Absolutely not. Uh, (laughs) I love the honesty. I always laugh. And when I tell people this, like this was a position that I was actually asked to do three different times. Okay. And um, so the final decision making point for me was really a moment when I was just kind of lying in the bed and thinking about my future and where I wanted to have the most impact. And I just kind of woke up. I tell people this, I just woke up in the middle of the night and it was just kind of like, if not me, then who? And I went ahead and accepted it. But the the two other times I just was so struggling with nonprofit. Everyone knows nonprofit work is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, I, not that I don't have the heart for it or didn't have the heart for it. I just knew how hard it was. And I was already kind of doing my own thing. So it not, it, no, it was never something I intended to do, but I'm so grateful that there was this calling on my heart to do it. Yeah. But no, I never dreamed I'd be doing this job. Third third time's the charm. Third time's the charm. And, and so many people pushed me. I mean, there are people that, and they know who they are, that literally just kept reaching out and were like, you are perfect for this. You mm-hmm. may not see it. And I think it was a little bit of doubt, yeah. a little bit of imposter syndrome, right? Like, can I do this? Yeah. Can I really lead this huge organization. So I think I, I contribute my hesitancy to a little bit of my own self-doubt as well as just the fear of doing something so large. But again, I'm glad I did it. And that third time I was just like, we're doing this. Well, and I think so many <laughs> leaders do that. We yeah. all do that. We Absolutely. all have that imposter syndrome and Absolutely. we have these, whether we admit it or not. So mm-hmm. I think it's beautiful <laughs> that you're as authentic as you are, because I think we all need to hear that, that, mm-hmm. you know, even the most accomplished of people, We all have our struggles and we all have to kind of get our head wrapped around doing something that feels really big Mm -hmm. and a little scary. Absolutely. But you are kind of the perfect person for this job. (laughs) Thank you. And you've always been a big believer as long as I've known you um, or known about you, a big believer in helping people kind of discover their best self, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. being a champion for people. You're a certified life coach. I am. You've got a lot of other certifications (laughs) that are really about helping people. so why is this so important to you, do you think? Why, why, why do you get really involved in that kind of work? This was a full circle moment for me, and I didn't really know it. To your point, I've done life coaching and career coaching and executive coaching for a few years now, and a lot of my work has been based on trauma and my own experiences as a child, from sexual assault to rape to domestic violence, just some of those very real experiences that have shaped me, that I've, got, I've grown comfortable sharing because I understand now, especially that when you share, it creates room for other people. Mm -hmm. And so I always knew that by being authentic, being real with my story, being open and honest about everything, good, bad, and ugly in my own life, I was creating this genuine impact. And I I never really knew it, but I I feel it. And people tell me, and I'm always like, wow, this is, this is the work, right? So at this point in my life, it was just so full circle because now I'm like everything that I've done leading up to this I can now bring to this amazing organization 
with all the relationships and the connections and do extremely good work for the very same girls that look like me. So this this moment, I mean, really did just, I don't know, it just really did something to me when I really sat back and thought about you, you didn't know that your life would lead to this, but everything you've been through led to this, literally led to this. Isn't that the cool part? When we get to a point, you and I, I think are roughly the same age. Yeah. yeah. We've had a 20, 25 years of career experience mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. You can really look up here and, and now look down at that patchwork quilt. I always like to call yeah. it kind of a patchwork oh, I love quilt that. Yeah. and say, oh, well, I had this, what I'm doing today was never even something I thought about when I was graduating college or, or whatever, or was a young girl. But man, look at that person I met and that person I met and all they all brought me to this moment. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of how you feel how about feel. this experience? I love that example, that analogy. It does. It feels like even in the moments when I was at my lowest, right, and didn't quite understand what the up looked like or what hope looked like or what my next was going to look like. Now I look back on it. I'm like, this was it. So that that's the hope. And I think that's what I want others to see. Like no matter where you are in your life, there's something on the other side of it. And in this moment, I can finally see it. And it did. It took a while. But yeah. to finally see it is the best feeling in the world. It's cool when it, it clicks. It is so cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's really cool when it clicks. And I imagine there were people along that path that helped you realize mm-hmm. those abilities. You mentioned yeah. you had other people in your ear telling you you were right <laughs> for this before you ever believed it. So Absolutely. tell me a little bit about that and and why that's important for people really to embrace mentors in their life mm-hmm. because we kind of all need somebody to push us a little bit. Absolutely. I will never not need community, other strong women. Um, you know, I give credit to my mother, my grandmother who passed, my aunt who passed, all these women that have shaped me in one way or another are truly the reason I'm here. And so for us as women, especially being more vulnerable and open and honest and real with one another is how we move forward. And I know it's hard. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very hard for us to trust and let down guard, especially when we've been hurt. Mm -hmm. But what I'm learning now, especially is that the more open I am and, and even if some people don't understand it right away, right. Cause I've always been this nice. However, (laughs) um, I think, What I'm learning now is what I give and what people receive from me is exactly what I've been given. Mm -hmm. It's just a cycle, right? So I'm learning how to be a better woman because of the women that have been in my life. So it's just super important for us to continue to remind ourselves that we need each other. (laughs) Like we truly do. Um, And we need to stand up for each other. It's just what it is. You know, and I think we've come a long way in that as women in leadership roles, but it hasn't always been easy. Mm -mm. You know, I think sometimes (laughs) when you fight for a seat at the table, as a female or, or someone in a minority position, um, yeah. you have a tendency to really wear that armor, right? right? Mm-hmm. And to not really let people in or mm-hmm. see the weakness or see the struggle and see how hard it is. But I feel like we're getting a little bit better about that, mm-hmm. but we do have a lot of room to improve mm-hmm. as women in support of other women. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, We do. I mean, we a lot of what we experience as women, I, it, it, while it's very different, vastly different, when you think about racial inequities, when you think about what women have gone through over years, when you think about just the way the world has been set up, the way mm-hmm. society has been set up, that constant fight and in, in that, you know, like you said, fighting for a seat at the table, fighting for dollars, fighting for opportunities is very much ingrained in us. And if we decide we will no longer fight, Mm -hmm. I think we will see (laughs) that that was by design, right? Because the better we get, the more things change, right? So when we're working together and we're trying to figure things out together, we move mountains. And so there are people who don't want that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the harder we work to maintain that sense of solidarity and work together and fight together, I truly believe we will see and continue to see changes, but we have to let that armor down. We have to let it go because most of it wasn't ours to hold anyway. Right. You know, it really wasn't. We just, we brought it with us. I call it, Mm -hmm. you know, it's the backpack we carry. We can set it down. Yeah. Or felt like we were, or that's what we we had had to to do. Exactly. Right. Or we're taught to do. Taught to do. Yeah. So what do you think you have taken away from some of those real life experiences that you shared that have really helped you in this role with these girls? Trauma's real. And I think, I understand that a lot of things have become, um, you know, almost like a, I don't know what the word is, where we talk about trauma in ways that we almost deminimize or minimize, I'll say minimize how important it is to really talk about it. Like we talk about it in ways that, I don't know, don't really do it justice. And so 
I want to people to understand that trauma is real and it impacts every area of our lives. Like it impacts how we work, how we communicate, how we show up for ourselves, how we show up for others. And some of us look at trauma differently, right? For me, sexual violence and domestic violence is true trauma. Others don't necessarily have that same trauma, but it doesn't mean it wasn't traumatizing, right? It doesn't mean they didn't experience something that impacted the way they show up. So for me, a big part of the work I want to do and will do at Girls Inc. and just in our greater community is the healing aspect. Like none of us will do good work in anything until we heal whatever it is that's in our way. And that could mean a whole lot of things, right? But healing is important. And so for me, understanding and recognizing that if I can heal somebody to, to see themselves the way I see them and to interact with people in the right ways and to communicate in strong ways, I'm doing the work, right? Yeah. So for me, my healing led to this, really, really being intentional about it. And I tell people all the time, I focus on me more than I focus on anything else. Like I focus on me, right? And how I show up and what I'm doing. Every day I think about it. And I think that's part of my healing journey. And that's yeah. how I'm able to put out what I put out to the world. Because I know I'm, I'm paying attention to how I'm showing up all the time. And that's been my healing journey. So that's what I've learned. Like just yeah. keep healing, keep growing, and then keep teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so easy for us to just... um not heal ourselves mm -hmm. or not look inward oh, yeah. because we don't want to, then we, blame. we don't want to address. <laughs> yep. um, and we have other people we have to take care of, that you know? And mm -hmm. so we just tend to get in that mode of just kind of, okay, yep. I got to take care of this person, this person. And we forget about ourselves. We do. We do. So as at Girls Inc., I mean, you know, it's, it's known that the mission there, and you mentioned it mm -hmm. is strong, smart, and bold. Yes. And I think that's an important mission and it always has been, mm -hmm. but I'm a mom of a teenage girl, and I don't know of a better mission today <laughs> in today's world with all of the pressures that our girls face mm -hmm. than trying to help them understand that they can be smart, strong, and bold mm -hmm. in our world today. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I agree. We cannot develop our next generation of thought leaders, especially female thought leaders, without literally ingraining that in them when they're little. So that's why I'm so encouraged by Girls Inc. because we start at five, right? I wish we could start at two and maybe one day we will. But right now we start at five, which is a very impressionable age. Mm -hmm. It's when they start school and they start interacting with other kids and they start hearing and learning from other children around them. But if we can start at that age, creating in them that sense of self yeah. and self-esteem and worth and healing, then they're already ready for the world, right? And that's another part of our mission, right? We're preparing our girls for the world right. because we understand it's hard out there. And whatever we can do in our walls to help them feel complete, they don't need validation from the rest of the world. And that's part of the mission, right? We want them to feel validated within. So then when they go out there and they're, I like to say when the when stuff is thrashing and they're getting mm -hmm. hit from all angles, they can stand real solid in who they are. And to me, that's the work. You know, and I think about just my own personal experience with my mm -hmm. daughter and all of the things that I've learned in my 48 years. Mm -hmm. And um, gosh, I wish I would have known that back when I right? was 13 years old, yes. what you're talking about. Yes. I wish I would have had someone at that point mm -hmm. give me that sort of sense of, of self and yes. purpose. Um, but I hope to ha that she has that. And, and I know you're a mom, too. Mm -hmm. And so how does mm -hmm. kind of what you do in your professional life, I'm sure it plays into your personal life, too, with your own Absolutely. kids. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. My daughter, Nia, is 17. She'll be 18. She's heading off to college in a few months. She's a basketball player, and mm -hmm. she's heading on a scholarship. And I often look at her, and it, she's completely comfortable with this. My daughter's gay. She's very strong in who she is. She told me at a very young age who she is. And I've loved her and will always love her no matter what choices she makes. But what that taught me as a mother and that protection is that our babies are going to become who they choose to be. Mm -hmm. Our jobs are simply to instill in them probably what we weren't taught. And it's not because our parents weren't wonderful. Right. It's because they didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So for me, being able to grow in myself and heal myself and then give her this Again, it doesn't make me perfect by any means, but it does create a relationship that is so valuable because I'm honest with her about my experiences. She knows the pain I've been through. She also knows what to do to keep herself safe, right? Because we can have those honest conversations. To me, that's also part of our parenting work, to be as honest and transparent with our babies as we can be about what worked and didn't work in our own lives right. <laughs> so that yeah. they can make their own choices, yeah. right? So it is. It's, it's really interesting how, again, doing this internal work for myself has made me a better mother. For sure. No yeah. doubt. <laughs> so when you think about back to um, how old are your kids? 
Uh, I have a 12 year old little boy, 17 girl, and 24 year old son. Wow. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> so when you think back to Candy yeah. at yeah. 10, 11, 12 years old, Ooh. which is a hard age, Ooh. is there anything that you've learned along the way that you would say, gosh, if I could go back and tell little Candy mm-hmm. what, mm-hmm. what, what Mama Candy knows <laughs> now, <laughs> what, what would you tell her? Listen, yeah. um, here's what's interesting. I laugh about this. When I was that age, right, having full lips, wide hips uh-huh. and natural hair was not a thing. Okay. Okay. So the stuff that I criticize myself about people pay for today. Mm-hmm. And I wish that I had known then, and we had a society that still struggles with this a bit, but that accepts that beauty's beauty and standards are very subjective. And I just wish I had that then that self-esteem and that empowerment to know that everything that I'm criticizing is beautiful to someone else. Yeah. Um, and I think about that a lot because I literally remember being in class and just being just completely, your lips are big and your hair is nappy and your body, your hips are wide. And now in today's age, like people want <laughs> full lips and full hair, you know, it's just so interesting. And so I think for me, it would have been recognizing my beauty. And so teaching our girls that they are beautiful in whatever package they come in mm-hmm. is so important because low self-esteem leads to all sorts of bad decisions. Just it, what it is. It really <laughs> right? does. It does. And, and goodness, with we didn't have social media sure when we were growing up. <laughs> you know, we had these insecurities were there, mm-hmm. but they were, you know, we were probably dealing with them in school yep. and could go home at least and get a little reprieve. But our girls today and our boys, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's kind of 24 seven. Yeah. So yeah. to, to really teach them um, this at a young age so that they can combat some of those insecurities that just creep up, you mm-hmm. know, and you don't even know sometimes how they get there, what right. they co- where they come from, because if you do have, you know, great, you're blessed to have great parents, mm-hmm. um, they're, they're still there, you know what I mean? Exactly. So they still, they still come. So teaching them how to how to battle those yes. um, before they even get there is important, so I think. Important. Yeah. yeah. Self-esteem is real. So as you settle into this new role of yours, um, <laughs> I know you're a goal setter and mm-hmm. uh, a goal achiever. So what kinds of things have you decided to kind of set your sights on, you know, even mm-hmm. just short-term and long-term for Girls Inc.? I have told our team and the community, I made a promise to them and I made a promise to myself that – Girls Inc. would be almost a hub for our community to feel supported and seen and validated and that we would literally create the next generation of thought leaders in all the ways, right? Because I always tell people there's going to come a point when I want to sit down in my rocking chair Mm -hmm. (laughs) and I just want to rock and know that I did everything I was supposed to do and I'm relaxed and I'm ready to just float on out of here, right? But I want to know that I did it well and that I left this legacy of future thought leaders that are going to be better than me, better than you, better than us. So for me, big vision is to create just this, this beautiful revolving legacy of young women and girls that think better than we did. I just, I I just believe it's possible, but I just believe we have to be intentional. So short term for me, it's just to really think about our programs and what we offer our girls in terms of, you know, how they think, how they see themselves, really digging into some of those hard topics, domestic violence, self-esteem, uh, rape, violence. I mean, they're hard topics, but we can't act like our girls may not experience it or have already experienced it. I mean, my trauma happened at 11, 12 years old. So to act like that doesn't exist, we shouldn't. We can't. So I want to talk about it and I want them to feel safe talking about it. Then I want to make sure long term that our staff, our community knows that whatever your young woman is going through, we will support you. We will find the resource. We will help you get connected. So I really see it. I, I say hub, and maybe that's not the best word, but th- I do. I think this community space, this collaborative space where our girls, no matter what they're experiencing, because we always talk about we want to support the whole girl. Mm-hmm. So that means everything connected to her, mm-hmm. right? Her family, her her friends, her school, her, her, her interests, all of that we will support. So long term would be, you know, really strong programming, um, that creates space for our girls to be whatever it is they want to be. And we ride with them the whole way. I love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and then personally, because um, I know you're always learning, and yeah, uh, you're always thinking of I things am. and how you can work on yourself <laughs> yeah. and how you can help others, not just in your professional life, but yeah. anything kind of, any goals for Candy personally mm. over the next, this next year? This is always a nice time to talk about it at the beginning of a year, you know? 
Yeah. You know, I still have so much vision. Like I have a, a nonprofit uh, Dignity Health Collective that I'm doing with a dear friend of mine where we will tackle mental health and coaching and really try to fill the gaps in where people receive their health care. And I know everyone's probably like, how are you doing all these yeah. things? And I was like, because my heart's in it. So what feels like work to some doesn't feel like work to me because I'm so determined to do all these things. So I'm still doing that. I still am trying to figure out how to tell my story um, because there's so much to my story that people don't know, whether that's a book, whether that's, I don't know. Like I talk about, I've been talking about a book for years. So everybody's like, when is this book coming out? I'm like, I don't know. It, it will when the time's right. But I think telling my story fully around what, what I experienced so that I can help others also bring some of the people who have been so instrumental in my own journey with me is important. Um, I don't know. Candace <laughs> needs, um, Candace wants to keep giving um, of herself in the ways that are very intentional and very real. And so I'm open to whatever that looks like. And I haven't closed my mind to anything. Like, I'm just like, you know, whatever I'm here to do, I'll do it. So I'm just open to it. And that's just how I'm kind of living right now. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got a long <laughs> runway ahead of you. And I can't wait to see what you do in the Thank future. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for having taking me. a few minutes with me today. <laughs> She's Absolutely. just got such great energy and, and, and <laughs> I appreciate you know, the rest you. of my day is going to be awesome. That's all that matters. I've enjoyed spending time with you. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for tuning in to The Sweet Life.